to the final victory! Hello and welcome to another Borshin's Retrospectives. Today I'll be covering Fatal Fury 3 for the Neo Geo, released in 1995 by SNK. And uh, I, I really like this game. I think this game is really, really cool. I mean, it's obviously an old fighting game, so it has a lot of problems, but it has lots of cool stuff. A little style to it. Talk about the gameplay. The main feature of the Fatal Fury series, like the early ones, was you had the idea of uh, what's known as a sway lane. Well, before, in like Fatal Fury 1 and 2, you, it was actually two playing fields where if one stepped into the other one, in order to fight them, you actually had to change lanes, which was a bit clunky. In this one, they made it more of a sway lane, so you have a background and a foreground sway lane which you can go into so basically you enter you'll see this happen where a character will move into the either the background or the foreground you can only dash forward or dash back during the sway lane and then you can attack so you can usually do a high attack which will send if it hits uh, you'll see joe did it just there he just went in the sway lane dash behind uh, you can do a high attack, which usually, say, if it hits, it, it will send them into the opposite sway lane. Or you can do a low attack, which will work as a sweep, essentially. Um, but it adds some weird, uh, very interesting movement around the screen. Makes the game kind of qu quite fast, to be honest. You can you can get around the screen pretty quickly. It becomes quite frantic, and it's quite fun. Although it would be definitely seen as a sort of a gimmick system. Nados, but it's it's fun to play around with. Certainly not as clunky as the uh, uh, previous systems in Fatal Fury 2, one special, as was well one. But one's just an incredibly clunky game. It's their first fighting game that they ever made after the success of Street Fighter 2. Um, other things, uh, the game's got it's a four-button system, uh, just like light punch, light kick, heavy punch, heavy kick pretty simple uh, in that regard. Uh, the In regards to like special moves things, it's an old SNK game so they had some pretty crazy inputs. And yeah, yeah the special moves are very tricky to do, uh, especially the supers. You will see a super in this fight, I think in round three? I, I finish off Franco with Honfu's desperation move, a, a, a super in this game, a desperation move can only be performed in desperation when you're, re you're low on life, I think 25%, under 25%, uh, you're, the red part of the bar begins flashing, and then you can perform your desperation move, which would essentially be seen as an ultra combo uh, in Street Fighter 4, similar to the system. So in this case, Franco would be able to perform his, and I'd be able to perform mine at this point. Um, the game also has as an incredibly weird feature, hidden desperation moves, which are mental and you would never see in a competitive match or anything. Basically, upon where it says go, at the start of the round, you have to press all four uh, buttons and start. Your name will turn green. You then have an input code that usually you have to perform on an even numbered clock tick which will make your bar flash, I think, like your name flashes, and then you can input an, an actual input to do the hidden desperation. They're just mental. It's a cool thing that they put in the game, but it's I, you would never be able to do it. It's, it's crazy. Some of the some of the codes in order to activate the flashing of your name are like you have to do close normals. So it's really hard. Here's a, that's hot super there or his standard desperation move, just a sort of a Ryoku Rambu style attack. SNK loves those. Um, but yeah, the game's, the game's fun to play and it's still pretty responsive. It feels more clunky than obviously a, st a, a, a fighting game of nowadays, but it's, uh, it's really cool. One thing I will comment on is the, as you've been seeing, the map. That thing is too cool. I love the map with the little mini version of your character going around the map. I mean, geese. Geese is one of the characters you can play, Geese Howard, a uh, classic, it's a cave villain. He get, he's driven around, he's li just little him, he's being driven around by, um, oh, I can't remember the name of his uh, driver. I 
can't remember. They've got, there's two of them, but they're he, he's being driven around. It's, it's just super cool. In the uh, options menu of the uh, home version, which you can access because they were exactly the same, the Neo Geo AES and MVS are the same thing essentially. Um, the options menu has all of the little versions of the characters going on the bottom of the top. It's really cute. Um, but yeah, another thing I'll comment on is the game just looks vibrant. It's vibrant, everything has character to it. Um, it's just super cool, man. I, I love, like, the Bob stage is beautiful. Um, my favourite stage is Hon stage, which you will see later on. And, uh, it's... I, 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 there's a lot of personality to this game. This game screams personality. Every character feels very alive. One thing that you can do also in the game is you can attack someone in a sway lane, right? With a, I think you have to press A, like A and B, but usually a certain, certain attacks hit. Oh god, accident! It's Yamazaki. Who, who? This is the first game. Mr. Yamazaki is in. Uh, one of my my favourites. Unfortunately, you can't pick him in the uh, arcade slash home version of the Neo Geo. Uh, he isn't pickable until Robot Photo Fury, which is the next game in the uh, Photo Fury series, which sucks. But there's I'll I'll, I'll, I'll probably play that later and uh, show you why that is ass. Um, but yeah, uh, when someone's in a sway lane, it, that's what I was talking about. Um, if you attack them and you get the KO, you would have actually seen it in the first fight against Joe. Where he's in the sway line and I hit him, and because I KO him, he hits the back of the he hits the tree on the stage. The best one is is when they're in the foreground and you hit them, they fly towards the screen. It's super cool. They've got tons of interactions like that in the game where you like characters get hit, in it, hit into things and all sorts. You'll see it in Hon stage, which I think we're going to now. Yeah, Port Town. Um, on the second, on the, the the winning round, I actually, I didn't know you could do this. I knocked the enemy Hon off of this. You're on this massive lift, as you can see, going up. I knock the Hon off of the lift. He falls off. <laughs> it's super cool though. I love this stage. I think this stage just so demonstrates the power of the Neo Geo. What other game in 1995 had the only the only stage I can think of in a fight game that's somewhat similar to this, but still doesn't compare, is uh, Rolento stage in Alpha 2. Like no fighting game had a stage like this, where you're scrolling through a massive cityscape, everything so vibrant and. And, and it's got like three different versions, but uh, every round it changes what it looks like. It also has a fighting level system, uh, like a Third Strike. This is in 1995. So SNK did a lot of the stuff that a lot of other games get credited for. Sort of before, they were a bit uh, ahead of the times in certain regards. Yeah, I love this stage. This stage is just great. Things that the game doesn't do. Um... I mean, it is clunky. The the inputs, like to do supers, is mental. So hard, so hard. And I mean, I'm a de I'm a pretty good fighting game player. I mean, I'm all right. I know what I'm doing. But fuck me, just doing his basic supers hard enough, and it's a quarter circle back, down, back, forward motion. It's not that hard. You can. That's a power geezer, right? Power geezer motion. In other fighting, games. see, look, look, he falls off. I just love that. I love that. It's a cool little interaction. He falls off the the stage. Um, yeah, inputs. It's a bit clunky. Also, there's not that many characters. You can't you can't play as most. There's, there's very few characters. Also, the two bosses, or the, the, what? Well, technically, it's three bosses. Yamazaki, who's cool, but the two bosses, Jin Chon Shu and Jin Chon Rei, the Jin brothers. They did a problem. The problem is, is that he's usually good at making villains. Now, Jin Chan Chu and Jin Chan Rei are very fun to play as. Actually, they're cool. They've got teleports and all sorts of crazy shit. The problem is, is they missed the cool factor. They just look like little like midgets, like dashing about and shit. And like, um, compared to some of their more popular villains, like Geese and Regal and I don't know Gianets even, they're all cool. They all have this, like, oh god, they're really evil. 
but they're really cool. There's something cool about them. And that's the reason why I don't think they caught on. So the, the boss characters are probably a bit of a letdown in this game. Unfortunately, I can't, I didn't actually get. The game, a classic SNK, another, this would be another down, but this is just because of the time. SNK's games become so input reading. They read your inputs to the death that you like getting to the bosses without putting on like lowest difficulty and like uh, or cheesing it out in some way with uh, certain tactics is actually really hard. You'd have to can do quite a few continues. So this is actually the last fight. But overall, I think the game's fantastic. I think it's great. I really, really like it. And definitely a game you should try out on Fight Kado. This is uh, this is where I recorded this. Um. Until next time, I might cover Real Bat Fatal Fury because it's got a terrible ring out mechanic. Until then, thank you for watching Boris's Retrospectors. I'll see you next time.